Hey folks, welcome to the 18th episode of the Dialogue Project with Aditya Bhatia, Akash Janakar, and Dheerit Bhatia. Today we have with us Suyesh Kumar, who will be pursuing an MS in Computer Science at Georgia Tech University in online mode. He has previously worked with various companies, including Google and Samsung, and done his engineering in computer science from Bits Pilani. So welcome, Suyesh. It's a pleasure having you with us today. It's great to be here, Aditya. Uh, hi, Suyash. Uh, great having you here today, man. So let's start with our discussion. Uh, the first and foremost question many applicants uh, have is they want to uh, look at someone who has been admitted and at their profile. So we wanted to ask you uh, your profile in terms of three aspects: your uh, academic background, your extracurricular or any volunteering activities, and thirdly, any uh, work experience or internship which you might have had uh, uh, before applying for an MS. All right. Academically, I have been a part of Bits Pilani. I have pursued my bachelor's there. I studied computer science in my undergraduate. Uh, then, apart uh, after that, I have gone on to have quite a lot of work experience. So, typically, I have this uh, idea that most aspirants apply within one or two years. Right now, I have uh, four years of work experience. So, when I had started applying, I had uh, approximately three years of experience. I think, which is a typical for uh, Uh, MS aspirants, but I've I've worked with uh, Samsung. I've worked at Directair, and I've worked. Uh, I'm right now working at Google. So most of my journey has been in the ad tech space. So with Directair, it was a lot of uh, work related to the uh, ad tech uh, space, and I'd worked with behavioral ad targeting there. Then after that, at Google, I work with a team that. Uh, handles the infrastructure layer for google ads so most of my journey has been in the ad tech space and with masters i had the idea that i'll go on and pick something in distributed systems that uh, is a core in a lot of uh, big scale systems like ad tech so that was my work experience uh, with volunteering i have uh, been a part of this ngo called mentor together the basic idea is that you uh, take up uh, mentees who typically come from underprivileged backgrounds and guide them with non 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 academic assistance so you uh, you can tell them that these are the programs that you can pursue in your college these are the internships that you can okay. go for really get them uh, uh, really uh, get them connected to people who are working on in startups for example mm-hmm. try to get them opportunities and guiding them on what they can focus upon in college uh, so that they uh, Uh, do well and uh, have good uh, uh, prospects afterwards so yeah that has been right. uh, mainly mainly my experience so far mm. that's a great initiative actually the one you mentioned about uh, the ngo yeah. all right so uh, uh, moving on to understanding your uh, test scores so which uh, test did you give uh, before applying for an ms and uh, what were your scores on them and which all tests are accepted at the at uh, georgia tech for an ms All right. Uh, I gave the GRE and the TOEFL. I think that is the pretty much standard for uh, MS. And GRE, I had three thirty-five, so that was one uh, seventy quant and one sixty-five verbal. And uh, with and TOEFL, I had one hundred and fourteen. Um, is the breakdown for TOEFL uh, necessary, or I, uh, like is that okay? Do you want the breakdown for TOEFL? No, no, that's okay. That's okay. Okay. I think this is Mostly, the uh, highest GRE score I've heard of till now. <laughs> I heard exactly. heard of three forty as well. So uh, I don't know. Like I said, uh, personally met someone who has a, uh, had a score. So okay, yeah, okay. Um. Uh. So uh, yeah, I would say that uh, GRE, TOEFL are actually the least important things in your application. And when I was okay. applying, because it was during the pandemic, most of them had waived the uh, requirement as well. Okay. Okay. So, so, so most of the universities didn't care about these schools. Right. 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 The pandemic time. Right. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, did you also uh, enroll the services of any uh, admissions consultant or uh, any test prep services for your GRE? I didn't uh, use for test prep. I did use a counseling service for uh, writing SOP and LOR. So there okay. was a service called Gradwine, which uh, was recommended to me right. by a couple of my friends. 
Mm-hmm. So I went with them, and I did get a really good uh, mentor who really helped me through my so so few lower courses. And okay. uh, I had a friend as well who was very knowledgeable about all this, so she had also helped me a lot through uh, writing a so few lower. So it was a combination of both the services at least. Okay, okay, okay. So, uh, so I had one question actually. Uh, why did you choose uh, studying via an online mode? Like, uh, what was your uh, thought process behind this uh, decision? Um. So I decided to do masters because I actually uh, went to a friend of mine who was going for masters that year, and uh, he was describing me the kind of uh, things he was studying, the kind of projects he was doing, and that idea really got to me that. Uh, you could go for a really quality education after bachelor's as well because before that i had the opinion that what's the need for masters because you get a good job anyways and you're earning mm. well so what's the need for masters so my main goal was that i wanted to do a degree uh, i wanted to pursue a degree i wanted to study computer science further and explore some topics that i wasn't able to in my bachelor's so that was a starting idea but then as i went through this process of uh, shortlisting colleges and going through all the programs i got to know about the online versions of these so two of them mm. that i uh, really liked was this georgia tech's online one and uiuc's online one and on, it is a very same program that they have on campus delivered in an online fashion but the cost okay. is way, cost is way lesser than uh, your on campus one so right, people right. can people can end up uh, spending hundreds of grants uh, usd for their masters program and here at georgia tech mm. i'm spending 7000 dollars for the entire program mm. <laughs> so uh, the okay. idea was that i i get access to a huge community through georgia tech i mm. don't leave my job i continue focusing in my job and my career while pursuing a, a, an education that is just as it is as an on campus at a very very cheap uh, price tag right yeah and, Makes sense. The 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 other idea was that uh, a lot of people go for masters so that they can access the U.S. job market. So they you they would apply to mm. uh, U.S. Uh, U.S. colleges so that they get a visa and they're able to work there. Um, what I did after applying for masters was I applied to a lot of uh, big tech companies. So this was uh, Facebook, Uber, Google, so on and so forth, and mm-hmm. I got. So I got some really good offers, some international offers as well, and I realized that you don't need a master's to uh, go international. Right, For US, right. I would I would definitely definitely say that if the US is your goal, then master's is an easy way to go. But a lot of these companies like Google and Amazon, they can send you to the US after you work for them for a while in India. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So the main okay. idea was that uh, uh, opportunity to go to the US is still there, even if you don't do an on-campus right. master's. And the online master is really valuable. Okay, right, right, right. So uh, this is a uh, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Sorry. So basically, an ROI based decision. Um, mm, yeah, sense yeah. for me, and it could absolutely yeah, um, uh, somebody else could go to a different conclusion. For example, somebody who's just out of college, who doesn't have this work experience, who may not be able to crack uh, big tech uh, mm. interviews, for example. Maybe it mm. makes more sense mm. for them to go for the masters. Hmm. Hmm. Got it. Got it. Okay. Yeah. Um. And uh, like, what was the uh, uh, application? Like, what were the application stages involved, uh, uh, which you went through for an MS? Um. Most of them had a similar process in which you uh, have to prepare an SOP. You have to find your recommenders, uh, and get them to. send the, that recommendation to their platform some of them would have custom questions as well and this would uh, generally be a little different for each of uh, these programs so you need to so specifically prepare answers for them and i think the general recommendation is that you should really know the program that you are being uh, uh, that you are applying to you should know the ins and outs of it and really highlight that in your sop that this is what you like mm-hmm. about your program and this is why it makes sense for you why they should select you Because you are an ideal candidate for that program, so basically mm-hmm. uh, doing that individual research for each college and highlighting that in your SOP was the main thing. So uh, you complete this application; it will have these questions, it will have the SOP, the uh, OR, and all. Submit that, and afterwards, uh, they take about two three months to get back to you with their decision. Okay. Okay.
so the application process is a replica of what happens in the uh, like for the applic uh, offline uh, ms right exactly it's there a very simple in, in, no. exactly the same. Oh. after due difference got it got it understood uh, so uh, moving on smiyesh uh, could you share uh, some tips for uh, the lors and the sops for our viewers yeah um i'll focus more on the sop because typically lors is something that uh, professors really know how to do and write it themse- themselves or sometimes they might uh, suggest that you give them some kind of framework for their lor some pointers i think you can give that that is fine for sop i'll tell that uh, specific, this is specifically for mscs and uh, technical masters you need to just focus upon what you have done in your life what you've done what your experience has been like and what uh, your technical expertise is in so um, my idea going in writing an sop was that i need to really embellish on what my journey has been like and what's my inspiration and all and i was struck down on that thought um so there there is nothing like you have to write that how you met apj abdul kalam for the first time and that inspired you to become a scientist and all all that is fluff and this should that should not be on your sop the one idea that you can keep in mind is you have a 100 word limit you should look at that as 100 dollars each word that you have is should be spent on something that really adds value to your sop so you should absolutely yeah. focus upon what your research has been what your work experience has been why this program makes sense to you and why you make sense for this program yeah. and format it in this manner that you get the most out of each word you put in the sop so you focus it's a very formal formal statement of purpose i'm not sure about how mba sop is and all happen but they might have a lot more of this fluff about how their mm. journey made sense and all here you should really focus on your technical capability and uh, stick to that okay so very very formal formal document and that's all apart from that lor is something that uh, professors are very familiar with writing after all these years so i think i don't have any tips there understood understood uh but the tip on S, uh, on sop is actually very useful um so moving on are there any resume tips uh, you would like to share for applying to the ms my resume tip uh, my resume was pretty much similar to what i had been using for my professional ones as well so maybe i can uh, share some general tips for resume um one thing is that resume is something that it's a document that people just use to blank through and get an idea and feel of you so it should not be a very long document ideally it should be a single page resume and really focus on the most important things that are uh, that they'll find useful about you so your academic experience your research experience is very useful work experience that will shown to uh, that can be shown as a proof that you will do well in academics so for example maybe some research initiatives you have taken during your work these are the things that you should highlight and you should really uh, make sure that you quantify your achievements so if you worked on an algorithm for mm-hmm. example and that algorithm uh, improved uh, business revenue how much did it increase that business revenue was it a 1% increase was it a 10% increase what is an absolute reversal of their uh, business model you should really hi- quantify that because if you just say that i improved the business it doesn't really make sense right uh, you they don't get the value of that work from that so you have, you should have very succinct points on what you did and what it was uh, what impact it ha- had and quantify that impact one okay. approach that uh, p- people use for both sops and resume is the star approach uh, it's called situation task action result so you write uh, what you did in this format that you describe the situation what was the task at hand what action did you take for it and what were the results that uh, came out of it if you say, say it in this manner uh, it gives all the vital things in a certain mm. limit got it got it. that was such a value added point like uh, so moving on uh, could you give us the summary of the acceptance and rejection why did you end up choosing choosing georgia tech as an ms program um so i had applied in total to seven places uh, seven uh, i finally decided for six places so uh, they were ui uc and georgia tech were online programs uh, cornell was uh, the masters in engineering program uh, at cmu i had applied for uh, ms in information networking 
uh, I applied for USC MSCS and uh, Wisconsin Madison uh, PMP program. So these were the mm. programs that I applied to. From this, uh, I got accepted to UIUC, Georgia Tech, and Cornell. And uh, through this process, and after getting, uh, after applying to multiple big tech companies, I came to the conclusion that I want to continue working while pursuing a, an online master's. So essentially, my choice was between UIUC and Georgia Tech. And with Georgia Tech, I saw that it was a more diverse course structure. UIUC mm-hmm. was very centered around data science. And I do want to explore data science, but with Georgia Tech, I had more flexibility with what I wanted to study. So I ended up taking Georgia Tech. Okay, got it. Got it. Make sense. I just have an I just have an added up uh, an up question over here actually. Uh, so uh, so in terms of uh, selecting modules and uh, courses, or uh, the flexibility is same as what an um, offline MS uh, provides you with. It's the exact it's exact same program, the same specialization, the same course. Exa- okay. 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 Yeah. Make sense. So uh, coming to the end of our discussion, so how should an aspirant build his or her profile to get in this domain of virtualism? So I would have different answers for where the aspirant is in his stage of uh, career. So yeah. if they're big, if they're beginning, if they're beginning in the college, if they're the, you know, in their first year and they actually have the foresight that they want to do masters, they have a lot of freedom in the world, and I think they should really focus upon uh, creating connections with their professors going and working them on projects, using those connections, going out uh, uh, abroad, go, getting some really good research experience abroad, and using that, uh, you, creating, uh, the main idea is to have some really strong recommenders on, on the profile and uh, some research experience under your belt. That, that is the best thing you can do for your uh, master's application. If you're near the end of your academics and you're looking to join a job, for example, and you have not, had no research experience so far, some of, one of the things that my friends have done is instead of going for a job, they went for RA ship in something like ISC or some other university. They did the RA ship there. They got the same research experience and uh, good recommenders. And then they went for masters. So they also had a very good outcome. Typically, these masters programs, they do require a strong research profile and strong academic profile. So these are the things that you need to focus upon building. And... Uh, if you're if you're uh, if you're a working individual, for example, and you have not had these experiences, if, and if you're not able to get those experiences through uh, your company, it can be a little difficult to get into MSCS. But uh, there are some professional programs as well that focus upon courses more than research, and maybe those can be more achievable. So depending on upon where the person is in their career and what have they done so far, these are different things that they can do. Okay. Make. Uh, with this, we have come to the end of our discussion. Yes. So, thank you for being a part of our discussion and sharing your insights. We sure many candidates would be inspired. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I hope so. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank Thanks, you. man. Thank you, Suresh. Hey, folks, thank you for watching our video. Please like and share this video and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Also guys, please don't forget to mention your views in the comment section below and see you soon with our next video.